You're listening to another episode of the Fredericksburg Strong Podcast. This is a local forum to inform and entertain our community, discuss local news, promote small businesses, and celebrate our hometown heroes with a little dose of humor to keep you entertained. Our mission is simple, to keep Fredericksburg strong. Today's podcast is powered by Pohanka Nissan and Pohanka Hyundai of Fredericksburg. And now, here's your host, Tim Pohanka. Good morning, everybody. It's Tim Poenka. I have a great Fredericksburg Strong episode today because I am joined by the newest members of the Fredericksburg community, our, the owners of the Fred Nats. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I am to be here. so happy. Art? Yeah. I'm going to call you Mr. Sober if you don't no, mind. No, no, no. Art is fine. Well, nobody, okay, well, nobody calls you Mr. Sober. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Really, really, really makes, makes me feel sober. even older than I am. You don't want to do that. All right. Then I will, then I, then I will, but I will grant yet, but okay. I will know that I, if okay. I get my mom or my dad comes and smacks me in the back of the head, then That's know that it's, it's your fault. <laughs> uh, Lonnie and Seth, thank you. Great to see you. Thank you. I, we, I would love to talk about the team and the family entity that you guys are because it's really easy to talk about baseball and want to talk about everything here but it's really you know getting to know you all has been very exciting uh and it's exciting for me because of the family and how i think our first meeting you were dealing with some personnel problems and i can understand that and it's how you were trying to deal with it in a very family hey get together approach which was which was I think what sealed the deal for me, mm -hmm. I, I'll let you know, that was that interaction that really sealed the deal. But if we go back, what started you, what started your interest in, in getting a team? In getting a team? Uh, I was a career banker and uh, I've had a, uh, uh, a deep passion and love for baseball going back to uh, my childhood. I was a poor kid in Brooklyn. Uh, I was at Jackie Robinson's first game. Uh, oh, wow. Lonnie and Seth have heard this story at least a thousand times. But uh, uh, I will do it, you know, for your benefit and, and your listeners. Uh, but that was April 15th, 1947. And um, it was a post-war period uh, for our family. It was uh, also post-Holocaust. We had lost a lot of family members uh, in that. Uh, my dad didn't come to this country till the end of 1938. Wow. Uh, immediately was in the um, uh, Normandy invasion, Battle of the Bulge, and, and he was a doctor. And uh, the war ended, and we bought a little row house uh, for $7,000 in Brooklyn, uh, half a block from Old Ebbets Field, where the oh, Brooklyn Dodgers wow. played. And uh, we literally were street kids. And uh, we played stickball in the streets where uh, home plate was a sewer. Uh, first base was the left rear tire of Ford parked on one side of the street. Second base was the other sewer. And third base was the uh, uh, right rear tire of a Chevy on the other side of the street. And, uh, and we did that 12 months. It didn't make a difference if it was snowing or not. We still played you know, stickball on the street. And then we, we would hear the national anthem being played at the ballpark as little kids. We would stand at attention, take off our baseball hats and cross our hearts. But um, our lives revolved around Ebbets Field. And Jackie Robinson uh, was colorless to children. Uh, we weren't taught that such a thing existed. And he uh, became a great hero. And uh, I used to walk him to the player's entrance at Ebbets Field from the age of seven until I was 15 when we moved to out of Brooklyn and into Queens. But I played ball in high school, played ball in college, uh, started a commercial banking career. Uh, the last 12 years of that career, I was president and the chief executive officer of commercial banks in the uh, greater Baltimore and Annapolis uh, area. And um, uh, had always loved baseball, uh, coached Seth uh, in Little League uh, for years. Um, and 34, 35 years ago, one of my best customers, very successful real estate developer, uh, had sold his company. And we used to go to fantasy, baseball fantasy camps oh, wow. in different parts of the country in his plane. 
uh, to, uh, to play and uh, said he wanted to buy two minor league teams and because he had sold his company for restricted stock needed to borrow the money and uh, I thought he was nuts trying to buy minor league baseball teams but if he wanted to borrow the money that was fine and I loaned him the money to do it and uh, over a period of time we became familiar with the cash flows, the franchise values, had actually been to games, and uh, when an opportunity 30 years ago came to purchase a team in Prince William County, uh, I went to my friend Peter and asked him if he wanted to do it, and he said, Art, he said, the way you love baseball, you should do it. And I went to my board at the bank, see if they thought it would be a conflict, they didn't, and uh, bought the ball club 30 years ago. Wow. So, the, the the love of baseball it, it was there, which is good, but it, it's just interesting that, to think that you that it was a, a friend of yours that went out there and started and and, and did that, and you, and you you picked up the the business or the 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 financials of it, so to speak, from there. Now you were living in Annapolis at the time. Yeah. Prince William, what you know? That's a pretty long distance. So what? You know, what made that comfortable for you to do that? Well, my Ferrari was pretty fast. Oh, that helps. Okay, so. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Now, again, and Virginia know. State Trippers are notoriously <laughs> kind to people speeding, right? <laughs> and it was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, okay. so. But, um, uh, no, it was uh, on the weekends, uh, you know, we all would come down to, uh, you know, to the ballpark. And... Um, uh, Lonnie was at the time working uh, in our bank. Uh, Lonnie had started working, you were what, like 15, I think? Yeah, I was 15, started working in a different bank that you were president of at the time. Yeah. yeah. As opening new accounts and as a teller and that kind of thing. Okay. So we had always worked together, you know, and uh, Seth was involved in his developing of his academic career you know, both uh, in terms of his undergraduate, uh, his master's degree, and then uh, law school. Uh, but everybody loved baseball. And um, so uh, I, when I retired uh, from banking and uh, knew that ultimately I wanted to sell the bank, uh, Lonnie uh, at that time I was in college. I was still in college when you bought the team. Yeah, right. And um, it was after uh, I finished grad school, and there were some changes taking place, you know, personnel-wise down at the team. And you said, "Hey, why don't you go down and and run the finance and accounting, uh, you know, part of the business?" Right. After I was completing my MBA. And when he, my dad called me in college and said, I bought a minor league baseball team, I said, never heard of it. (laughs) (laughs) Don't know what it is. Uh, Sounds very nice. And I didn't know. So as I came home, I would go to games and I would see what it was about. And then uh, I did ultimately then join the team in um, 1995 uh, was my first year. Uh, doing all of the finance and accounting side of things and since then have learned every aspect of the business of baseball okay of so minor league baseball of minor league baseball yes. which is a complete different entity and, and, and you have to understand that the only identification that Seth ever had with the ball club in those days was a picture might have been in the Washington Post as an unidentified groundskeeper <laughs> Maybe you, want, you can elaborate yeah. on, on that. Yeah, so uh, 1994, uh, I had just finished grad school before going to law school, and I had about a nine-month period. So I said, this is a good time for me to learn the business. So I went down and worked in the business. And uh, to start, it's the hardest job I've ever had. Being my, a groundskeeper. In my, in my, well, just I, I was a groundskeeper. I did concession stands. I sold tickets by day counted money by night, but uh, the folks who work in our business work insanely hard during the season in particular. You know, it's, it's a nine to midnight job, seven days in a row while the team's home. 
Um, but there was one game, and when it rained, everybody put on their tarp clothes. You know, you always had a big rain poncho, and you had, you know, good boots and stuff that could stand out. And everybody would go out and pull the tarp, and this photographer, I think it was for the, the Prince William paper, snapped a picture, which makes it look like I'm pulling the tarp by myself. <laughs> and yeah, the caption was unidentified grounds crew member. <laughs> so it was very funny. Those tarps aren't light. They're not light. And They're you put a little light. bit of little water on it. Uh... Tremendous fear of getting caught in the tarp and lost in it. So that kept you motivated. So you get to so see you, you you don't slip and you move fast. You do your best. <laughs> you do your best. So as I listen to this, you know, when I look at from when I growing up in this business, so we've been doing this for a hundred years. My great grandfather uh, started a company in New York. Uh, not New York. I'm sorry. He was in New York as a horse jockey, and he got, got a little he got a little too big to be a horse jockey, and that's what brought him you know, down south, uh, down Washington from New York, uh, and started the cars. And then obviously other family members joined into it. You were in banking. You went. To the, you, you, we, we always look at what our parents, your, your family does. And you somehow get involved ish in that in some regards. So you got involved with the banking side, but I'm not sensing that you were in love with the game of baseball. <laughs> right, so I'm, I'm not a sports person. Okay. Um, I don't follow sports. Um, I can't count how many baseball games I have been to. I enjoy going to sporting events of any, anything. I'll go to a hockey game or a football game or anything because it's just a fun thing to do. But I don't follow it. Um, and anytime I'm in a baseball stadium, um, you know, I'm paying attention. I applaud when everyone's applauding. And, but um, after 26 years of, of having to operate, of, of operating a facility where a game is going on and your staff is doing their job and you're making sh sure that everything's going right, I'm looking around and seeing our is staff present, our lines long, and that kind of thing. So I'm not a sports enthusiast, uh, nor are my husband and son for that matter. Um, my dad and my brother uh, and my nephew are the real sports enthusiasts. I'm really in it because it's our family business and I love the business and I love being in the minor league baseball business. Um, and I love doing it with my dad and my brother. Yeah, it, it, Lonnie has the ability to feel the pulse of the business. You understand that. Uh, you don't have to get the numbers, you know, each month. You know, you know what it is ahead of time. You, you can tell if something is out of line or doesn't make sense because uh, it kind of jumps out at you. But she could be walking through the stadium during a game and there's a napkin on the floor and she's the first person to pick it up. She may be the president of the ball club uh, and own the ball club, but that piece of dirt she'll pick up and because uh, it's her business, it's her company, uh, it's her family business and, and there's that tremendous sense of pride uh, and in that the, the product that we put out uh, is the best that we can put out. We're in show business. Without a doubt. We put on, we play 140 games a year. We have 70 home games. Uh, we have a producer, director, we have a script. Uh, with the new ballpark, we've got four built-in TV cameras behind uh, home plate, center field, first base, third base. Uh, we have a roving TV camera that's manually held uh, during all of the games to be with people, talk to them. Uh, you know, show the home run porch that you guys are sponsoring and all the stuff you're doing out there. And uh, the quality of the job uh, and how it all comes together, the food, the parking, uh, <coughs> the stadium cleanliness, that all comes down to her. Seth and I get the fun parts, you know, in terms of, of the baseball, uh, some of the marketing, uh, doing stuff with the team, with the Nationals, uh, and sitting and watching the games. You know, we, the, she does the work. If it makes you feel any better, <laughs> a friend of mine who is way into cars keeps going, going, hey, I want to start a, uh, I want to buy a car dealership, what do you think? And I go, you really love cars? And he goes, yeah, I really love cars. I go, then don't. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> and he goes, why? Because you won't be able to sell any of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're, you're going to fall in love with the car and you're not going to, you know, understand that it's a business mm -hmm. as much as, is, you know, and you're in this case a sport. If you, so you have to, I think you have to have that. So I don't, I don't think it's a, it's a bad thing because I know, I know for me, you know, I would love, there's lots of cars that, you know, you go, oh, wow, it'd be great to own. I'm not buying mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, to me, after thirty years of doing this, it becomes it's a it's a car. So I, I can under, I can relate to that a little bit. Well, one of the things that really makes the operation of a minor league team successful, whether it's games or other events, is is your staff, and we have a fabulous staff, and it has to be an all hands on deck mentality, whether it's running out to pull the tarp, which I, I did once. <laughs> uh, I Now at my age, I don't think I'm going to be pulling the tarp. Uh, We're going to leave it to the uh, unnamed groundskeeper. Yeah, yeah, we'll leave it to the unnamed well, groundskeeper. Ground, 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 ground. Yeah, I know, yeah, he's, well, yeah, so I, I, I really don't pull the tarp. Uh, and the, I also, the only, th the one thing I always say I won't do is be the mascot. At, and that's really just because it's not my personality to do it um, and we have fantastic people to do it but I will you know meet but it's not just me it's the whole staff we're picking up trash after games underneath the stands we are if I see a long line at the gate I'll start tearing tickets and help get people in through the gate just like anybody would handing out programs we all are constantly looking around asking for help or just seeing that something needs attention and we all jump in to help make um, the experience for our fans um, as good as possible, whether it's helping wrap hot dogs or um, it, it could be anything, or, or needing to be on the field for an in-game contest. Um, so that's what makes a minor league team successful, is the staff, and we have great leadership on our staff, and um, uh, it's, it, it's a great experience. It's a lot of fun. And it's an interest, and it's a very interesting business, too. It's a very interesting business and very unique. So it's a lot of fun. Now, outside of COVID, obviously, which has now created a huge challenge for for any business, what are some of the biggest challenges that you face with the ballpark, you know, on, on a game day situation or with the team? Well, I think the, um, you know, what we've created uh, in. In Fredericksburg, and the way we did it uh, is really going to be a new model, I think, ultimately uh, in minor league baseball, and and very possibly, uh, you know, for both major leagues and and the other sports as well, in terms of the way they finance uh, the structure of, of a new facility. Um, and the three of us have all been involved in one way or another in terms of putting all that together and designing the ballpark, probably more because of my financial background, I've been was more involved in the financing of it. But um, I, we had the extraordinary opportunity uh, of being approached by a great city uh, that wanted to cooperate as much as they could and on as fiscally uh, responsible basis as they could in terms of uh, trying to make a what they considered to be a major amenity uh, for the community uh, occur and um, the City Council voted eight to nothing to enter into an agreement with us that doesn't happen oh no it's no you you hear communities it's a fight and the, the and I will say this: the previous to you all coming, we the county in the area had a, an opportunity with another yeah. team, and it became a huge fight because of. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that one of the differences is that, uh, and I think that uh, the mayor uh, understood this, and certainly the city manager and uh, the director of economic development and members of city council, and I think the business people, including yourself, that were so welcoming to us when we first came in, is that we're not a company. Uh, we're family. And we've been in the business for 30 years, and we anticipate being in it for at least another 30 years. Uh, this was a passion for us, and uh, 
Uh, there's no board of directors, there's no stockholders that we're responsible to. The three of us own the ball club together. Uh, tragically, their, their mom died many, many years ago. And so it's, you know, the three of us, uh, uh, they've got great husbands and wives and they've got great children. And uh, every Saturday night for years, uh, our entire family has been at the ballpark. And uh, whether or not I was living up here or I was coming up for every game uh, on weekends and, you know, and so forth. And um, uh, we created uh, a model uh, where we basically funded uh, the cost of the ballpark and entered into an agreement with the city uh, in terms of a uh, marketing and use agreement that was incredibly fair to everybody. And uh, uh, as, as a family uh, experience for the three of us, uh, the design of the ballpark, along with our friend uh, Peter Kirk, who was the guy that I loaned the money to 35 years ago and who was involved in building about 15 ballparks uh, after that occurrence, uh, there is part of each of us in the design uh, that you know, like the stone walls were Seth's idea. Uh, the scoreboard box, the field boxes, uh, there was, uh, terracing out in right field, uh, the club uh, on the concourse level behind. They're all unique things to our ballpark. We're all things that we all individually contributed. And so the, uh, or my grandson, Seth's son, uh, designed the cross bat entranceway, which is being fabricated right now, that's going to be very dramatic, uh, where the city, uh, recognizing my relationship with Jackie Robinson, uh, giving the address of the ballpark as being 42 Jackie Robinson Way. So the, the personal elements, the family involvement, uh, you know, you pick out some of the stuff that, you know, that you were responsible for. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we've we been trying to build this ballpark for, for a decade while. and a half. Yeah. And uh, I, whenever I'm in any city and there's a minor league ballpark, I will drop in to see it. So there's a lot of little things that I picked up. Um, we have the, the club area and the suite area behind our ballpark is eight rows behind the home plate. That's the Charlotte AAA ballpark. That's where I picked that up from because you really want those fans as close as possible. There's a independent league team that's kind of right next to O'Hare Airport that I visited that has this field suite that is in the left field wall, which is part of the home run porch. And that was an idea I picked up from them. And uh, you know, I think the thing I'm most proud of is this manual scoreboard that we have in right center, where you know a bunch of teams have manual scoreboards, but we have this one set up, so we're actually gonna have 40 people sitting in front of the scoreboard and putting the numbers up themselves. So. You know, those are some of the things that make it different. I mean, I think, you know, the site is incredible. The trees are beautiful. And we really wanted the ballpark to fit in. And working the stone in and some of the materials we've used, it just kind of naturally fits in there. I think you know, we had on, on July 4th, we had the fireworks show that you guys were involved in. But to finally actually have fans out there, we invited in our season ticket holders and sponsors and had hundreds of people in the ballpark to actually finally have people in there walking around, enjoying, watching game seven on the video board uh, on a beautiful evening was just, I mean, that was rewarding. That's what you want to see. And that's what you start to remember about all the Saturday nights we had at the old ballpark, being able to do that here. Because uh, the stadium's not a stadium until it's got people in it, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah and then the, the other thing that really makes it a stadium was, uh, what was it? Today is Thursday, so it was Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, was the first home run that was actually hit uh, okay. in the ballpark. Uh, the Nationals, uh, you know, Major League Baseball, minor league baseball season is canceled, all 140 games. Major League Baseball is gonna to attempt to play a 60 game season. I think the first game of the Nationals against the Yankees is July 23rd uh, at Nationals Park. And they're starting off with a 60-man squad that will get paired down to 50. Uh, and then each game will have probably 26 or 27 active players with the National League 
uh, actually using a DH, uh, you know, during this period to cut down on the number of pitchers that would be used and, and you know, and so forth. The non-game day players uh, will be at our ballpark. Uh, we'll be uh, playing simulated games, uh, working out, doing fundamentals. And right now we have close to 20 of those guys uh, at the ballpark. Uh, clubhouse is completely finished. Uh, they've got security down there in terms of uh, protecting them that is wild uh, and putting through a COVID protection protocol that uh, is really pretty impressive. So there was batting practice uh, on Tuesday. And uh, uh, a catcher that we had last year uh, was the first guy in. And he lines uh, a ball over the fence, would not have hit one of your cars. <laughs> 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 that are going to be out there. And yeah, uh, actually, he hit one right actually where I was imagining one of the cars. Yeah, he, so. he, he, <laughs> we knew it was going to happen. He pulled, yeah. he pulled one down the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at any rate, he first home run he hits, and Seth and I are the only people in the ballpark, and we jump up and I start clapping <laughs> and applauding. Yeah. And uh, Mark Shalava, who's assistant general manager uh, in charge of minor league operations, that was on the field. And he looks at us, and he jumps up, and we, you know, and the, the poor guy that was hit had no idea what was happening. <laughs> did you? Did someone go retrieve the ball? No, no. <laughs> it's, it's in a construction zone that's quarantined at the moment, so yeah. it'll, there's actually there's one sitting on top of the wall, so we yeah. can try. But what actually what was neat is that these home runs were hit out to left field on what will be the Pohanka home run porch, and it was cool because it really gave you a sense of what it's going to be like in the games because the balls. Anything launched there that clears the wall is going to land up in that seating area and on that concourse. And to be imagining the fans out there trying to catch the home runs, chasing after them. This one bounced on the concourse, went up and hit a sign, and came back. It's just going to be—it's going to be dramatic. It's going to be really exciting, and it, uh, to actually see the balls going out. And he—he he hit a couple more out yesterday. So yeah, I mean, I—I I, I think. You know, my great marketing idea, which I understand you thought was lousy, <laughs> <laughs> was that I wanted to have a car uh, right at the front. Lousy is not the word I would say I used. <laughs> I was dangerous was the word I would use. <laughs> and, you know, we wanted to, obviously, it would get, it would be protected during batting practice, but during the games, we would take the netting off and then obviously the the car would get hit you know and windshields would get cracked and it would get dented and and so forth and then there would be a contest each month where people had to guess uh how many times the car got hit and the only way that they could get the entry form was either to come out to where your people would be in left field and come into one of the stores to get the application and then at the end of the season they could then qualify to enter in for the total number of times, and if they won, then they won the car, okay? And then we would have a body shop as part of a marketing program that would agree to completely repair the car and so forth. I didn't say it was lousy. I'm not sure we're very clear about that. I, you know, I just want you to imagine your Ferrari out there. Yeah, I mean, we would have had it insured. This is, this is the example of why the guy who loves cars shouldn't be in the car business. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, when I, you know, so we had a we had a hailstorm that came through. Oh, there are. Oh and um, mm. I learned something interesting about yeah. hail damage in cars. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> that once they've been, they, if you sell them damaged, everyone loves them and they'll buy them that way. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I never thought of it that way. But yeah, I, but no, I don't know about many baseball, a, a baseball ding and a hailstorm ding are not exactly the, the, the same on that. Um, but, but yeah, that's, that's, but I just want you to know, I didn't think it was lousy. I don't think that was the word. I think it was just yeah, more I like, I mean, then you, you could have a fan, you know, who uh, would have to be sitting out in front of the car the entire game with a glove. You know, trying to protect the car. Well, I was the only the thing that I really the thing I liked about the idea. I will say this: yeah. I thought, well, that could be my seat. That's right. <laughs> I could have air conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I I could say, hey, where's my where's the pull up waiter? Whatever. You know, where's the drive through? But yeah, I was going. 
So you went and visited a lot of different baseball parks yeah. to, to, to come up with the idea, and that's a good and that's a, it's a good idea. I mean, I think that that's how I've heard some golf courses are made, where they right. look at different at different components to it. What are the? There's got to be. You said everyone had a, a, a journey into this. So what did you add to it? Uh, so what I added was sort of um, more aesthetic. My ideas uh, were were not nearly as significant as Seth's and not revenue producing. She's, she's more involved in or, uh, designing the team offices. Well, team <laughs> offices. Um, I did. Well, function, I, and this is where I was kind of, I wanted to yeah. ask about the function about. Yeah, I, I did have a vision of the seating bowl. So the main seating bowl, the seats are all blue. Um, however, behind home plate in our um, um, the field club, club and suites, club seats. The club, no, but the uh, the diamond, the diamond, uh, the diamond uh, box seats. Those are blue seats with red padding in the main seating bowl. And then, since the whole seating bowl was blue, I thought it needed a pop of red. And so the club seats and the suite seats are red with blue pads and then the terrace boxes and the high top tables are red tables with blue seats so it's sort of a blue seating bowl flanked by red in a couple of areas and so not that i'm a designer of any kind but i thought that will probably look good and i think it's turning out yeah. to look good and then we little little tiny decisions like at the end of the row the logo at the uh, at the on the and the seat that shows the row, the letter of the row that we alternated um, our primary logo and our cityscape logo. Um, I was involved in. Just, I said, let's let's the alternate it. F the F logo. So mm -hmm. we, so so it, so yeah. that alternate. So just a little little details, but I'm but I'm more involved in um, helping get our our front office offices, you know, ready to go for our staff furniture. Uh, the functionality of that, um, working with my yeah. husband. Actually, I mean, one of the other things you were very involved in, we literally at this time last year needed to develop our new logos um, in order to get them done and approved and on hats because the lead time for producing hats is pretty long. Uh, and, and we, about this time was when we got the financing. Uh, we started designing the logo and Lonnie and I were really leading that with a really talented guy who's done a bunch of minor league logos. And uh, there was so much attention to detail in the F and the curl in the F and the colors and the lettering, and in particularly the cityscape logo. Uh, we spent so much time on that, including with a variety of the city officials, to make sure to make sure we got that right. That um, it really uh, took a lot of time, and I think we're really proud of that. And I, I don't think Lonnie and I, with the staff we have, and you've gotten to know our staff. We have insanely creative people. That's not us. We are not the insanely right. creative people. But I think that's one thing we worked really hard at that got right. So, uh, if the attention, uh, you know, I've I've been very lucky. You know, we walk. I, wa I met you at the park on an impromptu day, and I didn't even mean to. And you took you were kind of take us on a tour. The attention to detail. You were talking about the seats and at the end, the logos on the end. That makes a huge difference when you look at it. Yeah. You know, when you look at the park. It doesn't come across as just a cookie cutter park that's been put together. You know, I, we've you know we've in this area we've all been to FedEx Field and it's yeah, we put we, together on the cheap quick. And this is not uh, the uh, uh, because of the COVID. I haven't been able to travel and uh, hadn't been up here for for two months, and uh, uh, and so I got up uh, here last Thursday. Last yeah, last Thursday, and um, I just needed on Sunday. Uh, I just needed to be by myself uh, in the ballpark, and uh, it was after the Fourth of July celebration, and um, I just went over and I just wandered every nook and cranny by myself. Uh, looked at electrical panels, a twenty-five foot long walk-in cooler, 25 by 15, you know, giant refrigerator, uh, went into the, out, you know, the sweet areas, the seats. At some point in time, I want to sit in every seat, you know, that's there. Um, the, the, the thing that I'm most proud of, uh, there are so many unique features 
that you just don't find. Now, the stonework really sets a tone of quality, and the stonework hasn't gone up over the main entrance yet. That all the, that's exposed block is all going to get uh, that same stone that's uh, behind home plate on the field and below the field, bo the box suites and the and the club. Um, I was there and five guys came in and I thought they were initially from the Nationals and I went up and I'm not going to say but they all had a logo shirt on and uh, from one of the major international companies not an auto company uh, but somebody that we've done business with and they had to come out and see for themselves because they viewed us in terms of where we had been for 34 years. And in terms of renewing that contract with us, which was food related, um, they didn't see us in terms of, their mouths dropped open when they walked in and they saw the seating room. And they saw everything that was totally unique. Well, I took them to what I think is going to be the most extraordinary part and that was our club that right now we're calling club 42 that's on the main concourse behind home plate with suites on either end of it and that's going to seat 200 people and it's going to have a bar that's in the shape of home plate and the wood is going to be the same wood made by uh, Fraser uh, Wood Company uh, here in, in Fredericksburg out of the same material that bats are made out of. And each table is going to be made out of that wood. There's going to be 55 tables. And it's going to be a Hall of Fame theme uh, to where each table is going to be named after a member. And we asked our uh, Founders Club people to vote for their top 50 members of the Hall of Fame. And I forget who one, two, three, or four were but uh, it came in, and so the number one table maybe will be, you know, Babe Ruth or Henry Aaron or Mickey Mantle or Willie Mays or Joe DiMaggio or Ted Williams. And those will be the first tables up against the window, coming all the way back. Each table is going to have the actual signature of that player burned into the table. So that if you want to come up and you want to sit at the Mickey Mantle table, that's the reservation that you will make for dinner that night. Um, it's from the upper suites, it looks down into the club. The view is spectacular. It's going to be open 12 months out of the year. It's going to be available for weddings, Christmas parties, New Year's Eve parties and so forth. To me, that's probably one of the most unique parts of the ballpark. So there's something in there that we've all been involved with that, you know, we're just incredibly excited about. I will tell you, just in that tour again, the expansiveness, you know, when you're walking down the, the sides of the bowl to where your concessions would be or that, there's a lot of room. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is a lot of room. The concourses it's, it's huge. are 28 feet wide. And and that is and that is covered. rare to see in, right. in even major league stadiums right. yeah. that are, are housing even more people, which I think is another thing that's great because you're not going to feel... Yeah, I mean, that's one of the great benefits we had of Peter Kirk being involved in this project because this is like his 13th or 14th ballpark. So we've gotten all the advantages of things that he's improved on since then. And yeah, the concourses are, are amazing in how expansive it is. And then we really added, uh, all the ballparks have these 360 degree concourses, but we really added space out there so that people can stand and gather and watch. I mean, there's so many different vantage points to watch the game from. You know, we expect people to be up and moving the entire game so they can watch from different places. And there's parts of the concourse that we don't even know what we're doing with yet because there's so much space out there. And those things will develop and will change over the years. Yeah, I mean, it, two of the big things that we're looking at, you know, we have this spectacular playground area uh, in the uh, 
Mary Washington uh, section and um, a hospital section. And uh, uh, we want to put in a, a merry-go-round, a carousel, which I think would be great. And then somebody the other day said, well, maybe, shouldn't you do a Ferris wheel instead? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that it would have greater visibility. Well, big the, giant baseball. Yeah, you know, something like that. But the in terms of the age of the kids, uh, we may be better off, you know, with a carousel than a uh, Ferris wheel in terms of, you know, what's going to frighten them and what's not going to frighten them. I am determined to do a crab shack. Oh, wow. Uh, out in, uh, you know, left center field. Well, excuse me, in left field. Uh, and behind the uh, uh, terrace boxes, this is huge area where you have those stairway stair uh, stairs that go down towards the clubhouse level, um, uh, and have the smoke just coming up from an old wooden crab shack uh, with wooden bench tables and seating out there. And uh, I love crabs. You'll find me with him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, it would be well to the left of where you're going to have your cars. Oh, that's okay. You said crabs, and you, ha but, you, you, uh, you, you have me at that. So, yeah. we're good. <laughs> we're so good. you know, the, we're, those are things that we're still looking at, at adding, uh, you know, potentially. Obviously, it didn't happen this season, but uh, hopefully that will have for the start of next season. Now... The other part that's important to keep in mind, the game itself is ancillary to everything that goes on. Because you're running a minor league baseball team, and it's not the, the talent on the field that's the important part. You're competing for entertainment dollars, not necessarily sports dollars. Is that right? That's exactly right. So we are, like my dad said, we're in the, we're in the entertainment business. We're in show business. And um, it's family-friendly entertainment and affordable price in a safe environment and um, you know whether we have bands pregame playing in the concourses um, whether it's the on-field contests whether it's the fireworks after the game or the giveaways or the kids run the bases or a kids club event um, or a reading program event um, it's all about involving the community and having bringing them in to have fun. Um, the ba there happens to be a great great baseball going on and great player development going on, but because the makeup of the team changes, it could change daily as the players are getting called up, sent down, what have you. Um, you know, ba real baseball fans, and I know there are a lot of real baseball fans in Fredericksburg. Um, they are going to love the baseball part of it. And they are going, I think they may pay a little more attention in Fredericksburg to the baseball side of it than what took place in Woodbridge. Um, but uh, the, the main goal is to have a great fan experience and to enjoy the baseball. Um, but it's a little hard to get attached to a team when the players are constantly changing. Um, but that's the whole purpose of minor league baseball was player development, and so you have to, you know, that just goes along with it. Yeah, a winning team isn't one you're going to see for very long. Yeah, it, it, it the fans um, in 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 our business try to in their minds uh, determine which player is going to be a star, and uh, you know what we market are, are the future stars. Of the Washington Nationals, and we've been when we bought the ball club 30 years ago, we were affiliated with the Yankees, and on that team we had guys like Andy Pettit, uh, Jorge Posada, um, who am I, uh, uh, yeah, those were those were the big names with the Yankees. Yeah, I mean, it would but there were other guys who had been with the franchise, Bernie Williams, uh, guys like that. Jeter skipped over us during that period of time, but and Rivera, yeah, Mariano Rivera skipped over us yeah. right during that. Although we did have his son uh, about a year ago uh, with the Nationals, but um, uh, the last 20 years, we've probably had about 300 of our players that have gone on uh, to the major leagues. Uh, at our level, uh, about 20 percent of our players, you know, get into at least a game. Uh, we've had four most valuable players 
uh, who worn our uniform, uh, Barry Bonds, uh, Albert Pujols, Joey Votto of Cincinnati, and uh, and Bryce Harper. And uh, who? Who was that last guy? <laughs> <laughs> well, the other the other thing that's unique for us is that being so close to DC, uh, we get the rehab, the major league players that were injured. So we've had. You know, Ryan Zimmerman a couple of times, we had Harper a couple of times, we've had uh, Strasburg, uh, any number of different people during the course of the season. So the fan base gets has the opportunity, you know, to see a major league player uh, or to see the top prospects. Uh, on the World Series team last year, uh, half of the players had worn our uniform at one time or another. So it's exciting, I think, for the fans to... Uh, to watch that know, development, I think it is. Yeah. And, and you brought up something that's interesting. The Nationals' AAA team is in California. Yeah. It's not exactly the ideal place to call up a player in an emergency situation, is it? Yeah, and, and, it, it, and, and to send a major league player for rehab. Uh, these guys don't want to do that. If you're talking about a, a Ryan Zimmerman or a Scherzer or a Strasburg uh, or even uh, you know Harper when he was still with the team, uh, they wanted to sleep in their own beds at night. Yeah, or be around their family. Yeah, and if they were you know doing rehab with us in Woodbridge or they're doing it you know now in Fredericksburg, uh, they can go home at night, and uh, and that meant a lot to them. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, minor league baseball and major leagues baseball are really going through a major reorganization now that uh, once the season gets straightened out and uh, obviously the big question is how many major league players are going to test positive uh, in the coming weeks and are they going to really be able to play the 60 game season which we all hope that they will. Uh, but ultimately, after that, uh, there are some major decisions in terms of what the uh, structure of minor league baseball is going to be. Uh, will it continue with the six levels that it's got right now? Will it be cut back to the four levels that Major League Baseball would like to, you know, see? Does it make sense uh, for the Nationals to have a AAA affiliate uh, in Fresno? and San Francisco to have a double-A affiliate in Richmond. And um, so there are some difficult decisions that are going to have to be made, and I think uh, we will see some some change in terms of affiliations and, and levels and league structure and, and total number of teams that I think are going to happen and come together over, over the next next few months. You brought up Richmond, which is, which is a really good, good push into my next question. Given the professionalism of the stadium, just how amazing it is, versus looking at that team in Richmond, you know, you've put pressure on some other ballpark, ballparks or, or clubs to really upgrade their facilities. Well, you know, I, th I think that the, uh, the ownership group of the uh, Flying Squirrels has done uh, an extraordinary job. Uh, in uh, the operation, uh, improving the facility as much as they uh, possibly can, and uh, generating, I think, uh, tremendous community awareness and uh, great attendance numbers. Uh, and uh, we certainly suspect that they're going to continue to do that. Uh, you know, again, the model that we created in terms of financing where we own the ballpark. Uh, we did a Wall Street deal uh, in terms of creating bonds uh, to fund uh, the financing of the ballpark. Uh, whether or not that type of thing ultimately works for them down there or they're able to do things to improve where they are, uh, you know, I don't know. But uh, uh, in our business, it's big enough uh, we're certainly going to do well. They're going to continue to do well. And anything uh, we can ever do to work together, uh, which we have been right now, I think Seth is, you've had some conversations with them in terms of 
the structure of phase three and uh, how we can how many people we can have in the ballpark and, and they've been nothing but you know cooperative uh, as have been uh, the other uh, ball clubs in the state and uh, Salem and uh, in Lynchburg as well Lenny, you brought up your husband mm -hmm. and so when I was out there it this this has been a this is not just a you know family affair from the people we have at the table you, you know, I've seen your husband out there doing a lot um, how involved is the is the is the rest of the family in in this adventure right now? Uh, well, my husband is in the business of system integration, so uh, he has worked on a number of uh, major league sports uh, venues, FedEx Field, Orioles. Um, Hinesfield. Hinesfield. I, I, I can't even remember them all. Where he's done, you know, redone control rooms, added, you know, completely new audio and video um, to to those facilities. And, and major corporate conference uh, centers right. and you know, stuff like that. Right. And so we, I don't know, at some point we kind of realized we didn't have um, an expert in that one area of technology. <laughs> yeah. And, and he's, he's become an expert in everything, really, with stadium construction. Right. Well, I was, he's, just, he's, I was he's, impressed he's with that. I, mean, yeah. I was just impressed going, I mean, yeah. when I saw every level of family at work at this, yeah. it was, again, it's just something that's very yeah. impressive. I mean, there, there's not one of us that isn't involved. Uh, Lonnie's husband, Matt, is involved in all aspects. My wife is a land use attorney and was very helpful in some of the early discussions you know, we had with the city. Uh, Lonnie's son, Jamie, uh, works in our store and when we're out doing sales for open house, he's walking up to me showing the sales reports. You know, and he's just going into high school. Um, you know, as my dad mentioned, my son has designed this entry feature for the ballpark. The logo on the shirt I'm, I'm wearing, my son designed as well when the city needed a logo to help promote this and my daughter, uh, announced our Mary Washington logo in front of the Mary Washington house when we did that earlier this year. And gave a speech there. And gave a speech. Yeah. So, I mean, it's uh, it's fun because everybody is involved in the project. So. so, obviously, family. Now, I've worked with my sister. I've worked with my son. I've worked with my dad. I've worked with my cousin. We don't always get along. And it, you know, it's, sometimes when, when things don't go well at work, they, they make their way home. I will say this, I, I, I just get the picture that you guys are, have, have an amazing work relationship with each other. And um, you know, I'm sure there's, there's trials and tribulations that happen along the way, but it's that common goal of putting the right product out there, which you really have all bought in. You really, I mean, this is, yeah. not your, this is not your, your day job is not no, no. Anything I mean, having to do with And if anybody with watching this saw me checking my cell phone, it's because I have a client that has called me twice you know, while we've been here. Um, no, I mean, this is, no, we, we do extraordinarily well together. And it's, um, it's a huge sense of pride. I mean, I, literally this time last year, the bond financing came through. And as my dad's described, what we did is unprecedented. It's unusual. It was uncertain whether it would work. And the moment we understood that the bonds were fully subscribed and we were going to have the funds to do this, uh, <laughs> the, the emotion involved in that is just beyond belief. We, we literally, when the deal closed, were able, we were able to electronically hear $39,850,000 being transferred into the trustee's account. Uh, in, actually in Richmond yeah. at the New York Bank. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was, uh, it was a wild feeling. Yeah. And, you know, to, getting back to your question, I think, uh, there is, uh, among the three of us, uh, there's no sense of ego. And there's no sense of, uh, you know, I have to be right, uh, or I'm the father. And, you know, you have to do what I want to do and, you know, and so forth. It's, uh, we really, uh, and, and we, we don't agree on everything, but if there are things that we don't agree on, we explain, you know, why. And then at some point it makes sense, and we just agree on it. 
Uh, I cannot think of something where any one of us said, you know, this is the way I want it done, and it has to be, and I don't care, you know, what you think. Uh, in terms of any of the design things uh, or any of the issues, it's just been, uh, you know, I, I am happy to say that uh, my daughter and my son uh, are smarter than I am in a number of ways. Um, there is, and the kids have heard me say this, there is a, a Hebrew word uh, called chacham which means wisdom or wise man. And the definition of wisdom is knowing what you don't know. And uh, I'd like to think that uh, at almost 80, a couple of days from now, that if there's anything that I've learned, it's what I don't know. And fortunately, my children fill in a lot of those gaps. And uh, we have a great relationship working together. There's obviously a tremendous love and a bond uh, among the three of us and, and tied in with my daughter-in-law and my son-in-law and all three grandchildren. Uh, but there's a tremendous amount of respect as well. So it, it's just never been an issue. I w you know, it's funny you should say the respect because that was what was going through my mind uh, in, in each of the dealings we've had. Uh, whether it was just you and I, or you and I, and now that I've met you, which is I'm very grateful for, um, it is a respect that you have for one another, and, and a love. I mean, that that obviously has to be there. Uh, you know, when you look at the stadium and you look at where you are right now, have you three sat in the stadium together and just took a breath yeah. and just looked at it? I mean, how was that? Yeah, it's starting. It's starting to sink in. And uh, and the the joy, even without baseball, and uh, the joy that seeing what we created together after so many years, <laughs> and after all the hard work with getting the finance, what we put together is uh, it's really indescribable, um, and that we did it uh, as a family. Yeah, we uh, we're. My dad's 80th birthday is Tuesday. So to celebrate his 80th birthday in the ballpark, which we're doing you know, with a birthday celebration, but also honoring Jackie Robinson, we're showing the movie 42, and it's gonna be open to the public. That is, I just can't imagine that night, to have hundreds and hundreds of people in the ballpark celebrating his birthday, honoring Jackie Robinson, understanding the importance of Jackie Robinson today which is more important than ever. More important than ever. Uh, you know, it's gonna. It, that'll be an emotional night. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that you know we've had the moment. You know, being together in the ballpark. Uh, and again, I think it's not even. We're totally past the fact that we've lost the season, and and frankly, taken. And I'm sure as you have as well, a tremendous financial hit because of the COVID. Uh, it's happened. It's done. And we have to go forward and make our business decisions, you know, based on the way that's going to work. But, you know, it's look what we did. You know, how on earth did we make this happen? <laughs> you know, I mean, it just incredible. We sit there, we look at this, look at what we did, you know, and and we're the the sense of joy and pleasure is just. Uh, incredible and uh, an extraordinary family experience. Really. Well, you know, from again, from going back to those first days and, and you know the renderings and, and what you were hoping it to be and, and, and all of those steps that went through, the stadium more than delivers. Uh, it more than delivers. It's it's something that if anyone who isn't from anyone who comes to Fredericksburg or is from here and has never seen what can be done in this town. Uh, doesn't have some sense of pride or excitement about it. I, I don't know what could ever get them excited. Uh, it's beautiful. You all have done an amazing job. Uh, the fact that you guys are such a tight group family, I, I hope everyone gets that sense from t listening to you speak that they're going to have an experience unlike anything else they've ever had when they go to the stadium for whatever event, whether it's going to be concerts that you'll have there, whether it's going to be just a, a movie showing that's going on or a fireworks display, 
uh, it's it's a pride. It's it's a it's a giving back, and and I'm grateful to be involved with you all. Uh, I hope I hope that comes through. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for taking the time to spend some some time with us and talk about it. And when the season starts up again, I would like to get you back and talk more about it. Sure. Um, or when we have some other fun things to talk about. But I, I'm just grateful to have you all here, and thank you for joining us. Be our pleasure. Thank you. And, uh, you just need to think about sticking that car right on the edge of the wall. <laughs> you know, now that we've talked about it more, you know, w maybe we'll do something. Maybe we'll, we'll have some fun and with I, that. I you, don't know. You talk about a PR event. Oh yeah, well yeah, well yeah, and especially if it was a Ferrari. So um, <laughs> no, I, you know, we we can. There's lots of things that we can. You you you've met. You know, you've yeah. known this about me. I am not opposed to doing crazy things. I have gotten the mascot costume before. <laughs> I've been in the pit digging things out, so I'm willing to do some crazy things. Um, one of my family members kindly referred to me as the Barnum and Bailey of the company. There we so, go. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us for this great Fredericksburg Strong episode. I look forward to seeing you here at the table down the road. Thanks for listening to the Fredericksburg Strong Podcast. Be sure to visit fredericksburgstrong.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content, as well as submit a request for you or your organization to appear on one of our future episodes. See you next time with another exciting episode of Fredericksburg Strong.